Welcome everybody to BNI Talks. This week we're talking about the potential of power teams and I've got Jenny Butts with me and another Jenny, Jenny Brost and Mario Garnier and somebody else is maybe joining us later. Who knows? Oh, he's here. Hi, Chris. Oh, is he here? Oh, he's there. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. This Chris Look at Sharp. Chris. So we are really excited about this one because power teams is such an important thing that is not always used in your chapters and it's a real... Um, uh, it's a kind of a game changer opportunity in your chapter to make more money if you do it the right way and you have the right partners. So uh, let me turn this over to Jenny to get us started. And uh, I don't know if you're going to do an introduction or, or what. So take it away, Jenny. All right. Well, that, the structure we have for today, as you can see, is going to be very energetic based on our first animated graphics here. Uh, we are going to kind of set up the general concept of contact spheres and power teams and talk about how they operate in your chapter and how you can take advantage of them. And then to drive home the point, we've got three members of a chapter here in my home state of Washington who are going to talk about a great way that they are leveraging their power teams so that you can start thinking about what it means in your own chapters. So we'll give the concepts, we'll give some generic examples, and then we'll let you do some Q&A and hear the stories from the chapter here in Washington and so that your lives will never be the same. That's our goal. High bar, but we think we can do it. Wow. Steve, I know your life is already never going to be the same. I, well, Let's that is get, true. That is true. Let's get rid of these guys. Okay. And let's talk about the concept. Um, all right, so you may be wondering why, I mean, it wasn't just the word power, but power teams in the same way that weightlifters or bodybuilders have the potential to be powerful, the contact spheres within your chapters also have great potential to be powerful, but they need to have a little bit of direction and a little bit intentionality. And we know that contact spheres, this grouping of symbiotic professions in a chapter have the potential to generate 40 to 60% of the referrals that any given member gives within a chapter. And so a contact sphere, you are probably going to hear as you hear about Better Together Days, we are helping you to either have a visitor day event where you bring a whole bunch of visitors from all professions, or maybe a series of contact sphere events so you can help fill out your contact spheres because the people who are in very small contact spheres who don't have many connected professions, they are probably not getting the same refer number of referrals or the same satisfying experience in their chapters that the rest of the people in your chapter are. So this is a way we just group professions together. That's all a contact sphere is, is you hear someone talk about that. A power team, on the other hand, is more intentional. And it's, instead of being a grouping of professions, a power team is a group of individuals. So now there's some agency. The people have actively committed to generate business for one another. They're not just saying, by default, I fit into this category because I am an accountant or I am a massage therapist. They are saying, I want to build relationships, core value alert, with the people who generate referrals for me and for whom I can generate referrals. So a power team may or may not be a subset of a contact sphere, but it usually is, and it is individuals who have decided to take some action to help each other give their referrals. Any clarification or anything you wanna to add to that, Steve? Sorry, the dog was barking in the background. Um, <laughs> that was pretty clear to me. And I think that it, it's just an important thing to know that contact spheres and power teams are not the same thing, though they may be part of the same set in a way. Right. Um, so I've got, I'm curious to know uh, what everyone, uh, if people are already asking in the chat about where we stand or, or where they stand within their chapters, whether there is a power team or not. So I'm going to launch the poll right now. And this is a three part poll. So you can answer all three questions all at once. Efficiency is one of my core values. So I yeah, love that. pretty fancy. So it starts off with, are you in an active contact sphere, not power team? What context sphere? Do you meet on a regular basis? Do you try to generate business for each other? Uh, number two is, are you in a functioning power team, meaning as a subset of that sphere or with other people in your chapters, do you work regularly together to generate business for each other? 
And number three is, is your chapter missing your ideal power team partner or partners? Very curious about this because that may be your top priority in 2022 is to find one or two members who can completely change the amount of referrals that you get. Yeah. I think that question is such an important one because uh, it, it necessitates us having a grasp on our business and where our referrals come from. So I need to look at my business goals and where my, gener my referrals come from so I can say, I need more of that. And wouldn't it be great if he or she were sitting here every week in the meeting so I could get referrals from that person? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's wrap up this poll and show the results. Yeah. Here they come. Oh, All right, really so nice. are you in an active context for your most of you said no. And you know what? I am really not surprised by this answer. I know people identify what the contact sphere is, but does the contact sphere meet once a month or every other month, at least just to get together and say, how can we help each other do more? What kind of things can we do to work together? Right. Um, are you in a functioning power team? Uh, there's a good number of people who have said yes. And I think that's great because sometimes you're in a contact sphere, but only a, a handful of people work uh, together regularly but the majority mm. say no mm. and then is your chapter missing your ideal power team partners yes 62 percent yeah, more yeah. than half of the chapters don't have that one or two people who yeah, can make yeah. a huge difference uh in the way your chapter operates and the way that you make money in your group yeah and another 12 percent not sure about that so even more uh people who probably are missing the very professions that could generate a lot of business for you. Yeah, I would have, there have been times when, when I was a chapter member when not sure would have been my answer here because you're trying to get some people to be that power team partner, but maybe they are just not interested in doing a little bit of extra lifting involved to get this done, mm -hmm. uh, to make more money. And so it can be frustrating as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is, this is a good one to have at this time of year because April and May are traditionally times when your chapter success coaches are already training and coaching the chapters on how to plan for and execute really great spring events. This year, we're calling them better together days. Whether you have a visitor event where you invite as many people as you can, we're hearing chapters that are having 50 or 60 registered visitors for a big visitor day. Or if you're being a little bit more strategic about rounding out those contact spheres so everyone has an equal chance to be successful with their membership, you have people in your midst, your chapter success coaches who are prepared to help you do walk through a process. You don't have to make it up. You don't have to guess how this happens. This is something that we do every year about this time. And so uh, if this resonates with you and you are one of the people who answered by saying, I don't know, or I think we need some people, maybe a conversation with the leadership team or your chapter success coach would be good. And, and think about second or third quarter activities that you can do not second or third, yeah, second or third quarter, we're in the second quarter, uh, that you can add strategic people to your chapter so everybody can make more money. That's what we're here for. So let's talk about what some of these successful power teams are doing, and that may give you some good ideas about where to go next. Successful power teams become powerful, just like this little munchkin, because they are meeting on a regular basis. They are not just relying on the open networking part of their meetings. They are probably getting together monthly, maybe every other month or quarterly, and they are putting it on their calendars to have a regular cadence because these are strategic people for them to know. So that may be a good place to start if that's not happening already. The second thing is that they're creating referral opportunities. They're not waiting for them. They're not responding to them. They are proactively looking for those opportunities, offering the information, offering to make introductions, sometimes even before a potential um, client would even ask for it to say, you know, I've looked at this and we've talked about this. Could I make a suggestion? And they're creating those referral opportunities for the people on your teams. And also their meetings together when they do meet regularly are going to have some very strategic information shared. Sometimes there's an agenda. I was part of a very active power team when I was a member and we brought our laptops, we brought our calendars and we were saying, these are the people I met with last week. These are the people I'm meeting with next week. 
Would you like to meet any of them? And we would sit down right then and there and make some email introductions to generate referrals for one another while we were sitting at the table. So these are three things. I'm sure there are more. And if you are one of the people who answered that you are part of a very successful power team, I would love for you to add in the chat what are some other things that your power teams are doing? And you're going to hear some examples from the chapter in Washington. They are doing these and other things as well. Steve, is there anything that you would add to this? Um, no, I don't think so. I think, you know, uh, each power team works kind of a little bit differently and it's kind of what works for you. Um, but these are, I think, really good points that you're making here. And I think uh, meeting regularly is the first thing right at the top uh, to do, because once you set that schedule, um, it's something that is in the back of your head, you know, all through the month to think about, oh, when we meet this week, what are we going to talk about? How are we going to work together well? So that regular meeting is something that should be locked in. Hashtag accountability, also a core value. Indeed. Right. All right. So we often have very expected organic power teams that form and generate things. Like, I know you have worked a lot with contact spheres and power teams, Steve. What are some very common ones that you see in chapters? Well, you know, certainly in marketing, um, you know, the web designer and the graphic designer tend to work together or the uh, web designer and the copywriter, for example, or maybe it's the, uh, the physical therapist and the massage therapist yeah. um, passing customers back and forth to each other. If they, you know, if one of them needs a little bit uh, more help, they're always bringing them in. And sometimes I've seen, you know, a, a health and wellness sphere working together, uh, creating a kind of an event that might be hosted at one of their, um, you know, studios or offices or uh, to really get everybody in to see what everybody does and how they can help uh, one person with different modalities. Yeah, that, I, I love that idea of innovation and thinking of a different way to showcase your businesses. Uh, I remember I worked for a tutoring company in our chapter, and this was kind of transitioning into your example of an unorthodox connection. We worked for a tutoring company and we had a great relationship with the physical therapist because they were working on student athletes and we were looking for student athletes if their grades weren't good so that they could um, keep playing their sports. So we had kind of a, a, a strange unconventional power team, but that seemed to work really well. And if we had students who were struggling and they couldn't perform their sports and they got injured, then we would also have a physical therapist. And that seemed to be a good but unusual power team like the pictures here. Yeah, so this is uh, a pest control person and uh, someone who is in the wine business or, or owns a restaurant or, or something, and he's got a dastardly mustache. I'm not sure why. He seems like a nice guy that we It also with. might be just a tonic. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Make believe he owns a restaurant. And this is a real power team, I can tell you. So, uh, I um, have a friend who uh, is... Uh, was a longtime uh, member in uh, our Massachusetts uh, region before she moved to Florida. And uh, she uh, imported wine and she uh, was good friends with the pest control person because they both wanted to get into restaurants together. And I think this is an easy way for people who are still confused about contact spheres and power teams and what's the difference. I think you can look at contact spheres as uh, a group of related businesses, you know, trying to work together as opposed to a power team where they share a specific client. Mm -hmm. And that's why while these two businesses are not in the same contact sphere, they do have a similar client that they're both targeting. Mm -hmm. And that's why they work so well together as a power team. I love that example. And I love these graphics. <laughs> Who made these graphics, Jenny? All right, I think you and I have said enough. <laughs> Let me introduce you. <laughs> to some people who have real things to say, real examples and real money-making things to say, yes. Uh, so I'm very happy to introduce to you, I think we'll call them our panel. They are three members of Sound Referrals Chapter in Puyallup, Washington. If you're not from Washington, you would look at Puyallup and not know how to pronounce it. I think I'm, I'm pretty safe in saying, but we have here Mario Garnier with Schooly Mitchell and, and Jenny Ross with Construct Bookkeeping and Chris Nash with the Nash Group. We have, they are related industries 
They are a great power team and they've discovered some great things. So I think what I'd like to do is maybe have each of you talk um, a little bit. We'll start with you, Mario, because you are on the far left in the picture. Um, and tell me a little bit about what your business is and how this particular power team is working for you right now. I will, thank you. Um, grateful to be here. So yeah, my business is School of Mitchell and we are um, North America's largest independent cost reduction consulting firm. There's about 325 of us across North America. There's plenty inside BNI, but not all. So there's obviously still opportunity to grow. And for my part, I joined Sound Referrals. I, I might be in week 15. I'm, I'm still a newbie, but how this came about was, you know, I made the commitment to BNI um, to grow my own business. Um, just trying to be a sponge and, and soak in every bit of knowledge from the chapter members. And then Chris Nash and I had a one-to-one, -one, so I have to give credit to Chris because it came from a one-to-one -one where he had already recommended to the chapter, hey, let's get our power groups going. I think it was shortly thereafter, he and I had our one-to-one. -one. And just during our conversation, talking about what Schooly Mitchell offers, uh, Chris talking about his specialty being a CPA. At one point, it was just over a cup of coffee. At one point he said, wow, I get it now. You help clients to reduce overhead expenses. That could be a value add to my business because you know, when, when tax season is over, right? Chris is just getting through that phase now. Um, and he's looking at his own clients who some may be, you know, maybe they have a wish list of projects that they wanna pay for, but don't have the funds yet. Schooly Mitchell specializes in helping to find money that's already being lost in some other category. Or maybe it's a customer who isn't earning maybe standard industry margins that Chris would think is, should be available to that, to that person. Chris can then again use Schooly Mitchell to come in and just help look at some of the categories um, that, that Chris's customer is using and spending money on day to day. It's necessary overhead, but you shouldn't overspend for it. And that's where we come in. So we can add value to Chris's relationship um, by what we do at Schooly Mitchell. And so I had the exact same one-to-one -one with Jenny shortly thereafter. We had the same conversation and then it just sort of blossomed from there. And I just thought, gee whiz, I want every CPA and bookkeeper throughout BNI to know about Schooly Mitchell and let's just have this thing grow. So it's been a great ride for all of us. Um, so, but I'll, I'll let the next panelist take over. We'll see if it's been a great ride for everybody, won't we? We'll, we'll talk to your colleagues here and we'll be the judge of that. Um, Chris, can, I'm going to have, have you jump in here uh, simply because I, Mario asked, uh, said specifically, Chris was the one who was kind of getting the power teams together. And I know this is not your first BNI chapter experience, so you must have had that experience. What made you think this is what we need to do and get the ball rolling? Yeah, yeah. So, um... My name is Chris Nash, CPA with the Nash Group. Um, thank you guys for putting this on for us and uh, thanks for having me here. Um, yeah, I've been a member of BNI for going on five years now. And so I've been in um, several power teams and I've seen the value that they can bring. Uh, BNI as a whole is really powerful for building business, driving connections um, and building out your business on that side. Uh, what I like about the power teams is you get that ability to really dive in and focus on what do you want from your business and how do you make connections with other people in your chapter to, um, that want the same uh, customers, the same clients. How do, you, how do you work together in teams to find those people? And that's what's really great about the panel we have right here, right, is um, Jenny is a bookkeeper who focuses on construction, right? I, as a CPA, am focusing on construction, right? That's one of my core um, paths that we're going down. And Mario is an excellent value add, like he said, for construction clients. All of his services fit directly into what they want. And so having the three of us meeting together on a consistent basis and talking about our clients and talking about what are they seeing in their future coming up and how can we address those things and help them? That's really where the power teams, um, in my mind, have a lot of value uh, is, is that side of it. So I'm excited. Um, I just rejoined this chapter and uh, 
I'm excited to see how far we can take this power team. Yeah, and it sounds like it's off to a really great start. Um, <clears throat> and I love that you mentioned the specific niche of the business because I know, Jenny, that is something that you've been concentrating on and you focus on specifically doing bookkeeping for construction companies. So how has that worked here? And what does that mean for you when you talk to other bookkeepers or consider other bookkeepers, whether in your chapter or you're talking in other chapters? For me, it has been a, a great opportunity. Like everyone mentioned, I am specialized in construction contractors. That's my niche. So having these specific power teams and having, you know, Chris, who is also focused on construction, has made this power partnership really valuable to my business. But I think for our chapter as a whole, I add that specialty of construction, but it also leaves open room for other bookkeepers to join our chapter. And so I'm not just holding this seat specifically, you know, they asked me when I joined, are you interested in having another bookkeeper? And I was a little afraid at first, thinking of another bookkeeper as competition, when in all reality, the other bookkeepers I have met by visiting other chapters are now power partners for me. I can refer to them when anyone in my chapter is looking for a bookkeeper that doesn't specialize in construction. And then I can also, you know, refer the other folks in, in my chapter as well. So it has been uh, great for me to learn that they're not competitors necessarily. They're added team members to these power teams we're building. Um, with construction as a specialty, it also opened up uh, different power teams to me, like Steve's example, you wouldn't necessarily think that I would be, you know, part of the trades power team, but I'm a perfect fit for that because I'm in, you know, our business services power team, but I'm also able to join our trades power team. And some of the things they discuss are not as specific to me, but then I can be that financial advocate and support for them and their clients as well. So we've been able to build um, power teams that are outside of, of the normal, which I like. Yeah. And, and I, I love hearing about the strategy of it because I think so many times we have BNI members frustrated with their memberships because they don't know, they just think, well, by showing up and giving my 30 second presentation each week, the referral should start rolling in. And I think what you're talking about is the specific marketing angle. What's the demographic of the client I'm looking for? What problems do I solve? And how do I find people who can help me leverage that so that I can do more of it with ideal clients? Because Chris, I'm guessing you also do accounting for other companies, right? I mean, not just construction. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I have, I have a wide range of clients that I work with, um, but what I've done is looked out several years into my future and decided that I want to pick a couple niches, right? And um, because comp accounting is getting more and more complicated, the tax code is getting more and more complicated, why not specialize and become that nationwide leader rather than focusing on, you know, everybody? Um, yeah. And kind of following on with what you said before there about, uh, I want to just drive back that, um, going after what you want, right? And so one of the first things that we do as our power team is we sit down and BNI has provided the tools for this. There's um, that web map that you fill out of who is your ideal client and who are they connected with? And then you get together in your power team and you find out who else has a map that's similar to yours. And then you can continue building your teams out in that structure, right? And so there is a roadmap to follow um, it sounds like a lot, you know, to say, hey, build a power team. But um, I have found with BNI that it is actually pretty simple to follow their process and it starts working. So I just wanted to put that there. Yeah. And that's a good reminder <clears throat> to always be connecting our BNI activities to our businesses. Because when we start to get frustrated, like, oh, this is, I thought it was just a 90 minute meeting, or I don't have time for these CEUs, or I don't have time for more meetings, because everybody's busy. You know, April 18th was in your rear view mirror, you just finished tax season. It was crazy, crazy. And yet, if you want a pipeline in November and December, you need to be having the conversations all year round. And I think 
the kinds of strategy you're talking about are applied in a power team. They also can be applied in one-to-ones, which is how you discovered this whole thing, right? Mario, you said you had a one-to-one, you started this conversation. I'm, I'm picturing that there's a lot of individual industry conversations happening with Jenny and Chris and their clients that would come to Schooly Mitchell. How does it work the other way, Mario? Yeah, I'm really excited to share this part because we had a visitor, I'm going to say two weeks ago, um, who was a bookkeeper in a different industry, so not, not construction like Jenny. But Jenny and I have spoken about this person. I had a one-to-one yesterday with this other person. Um, and I got into the concepts that we're talking about um, on this call just to sort of kind of get the wheels turning about the potential and the possibilities of not only within the chapter, but even visiting other chapters and, and growing, growing your exposure beyond you know, your current 25, 30 you know, chapter members. And it was such a great conversation. The person said, I have to join. Now, now we have to take the next step for sure. But just to hear the person say, I have to join was um, made it all worth it. Let's just say. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, that's great. So as you're talking to all kinds of industries, if they're not construction, how are you givers gaining that to put it back to Chris and Jenny, or is there a way that you're specifically looking for construction companies for them? Well, I, 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 because the beauty of Schooly Mitchell is um, we help all industries of all sizes. So as much as if I have a construction company that I'm, that, which, which I'm currently I have in my own personal pipeline, um, that's a potential for Jenny. Um, Chris had said to me not too long ago that he was starting to kind of have a preference for folks who sell automobiles like an auto, auto dealer or an auto mechanic shop. I have two in my prospect pipeline that, you know, once that relationship is built, if they need a CPA, I know exactly where I'm going because I know, I know that Chris has that on his line of sight. But conversely, Chris had also said to me, He's not really interested in, in not-for-profits at this point in time because he, he had said earlier on this call he can't he can't do everything. Right. But I now know that if I go after a not-for-profit, that might not be in 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 Chris's on his short list, but he might know someone who is who's another CPA down the road. And so, it's it's I think the uh, the possibilities are quite large. Let's just say. Yeah. Yeah. Jenny, I saw you unmuted. Did you want to add something? Yeah, through our power team, Chris had mentioned, you know, he is going to be focusing on construction, but he is also focusing on the automotive industry, and he is looking for a bookkeeper for that industry specific. So I was able to reach out to a connection that I have and forward that along to him, which was great. You know, this giver's game, we always want to be proactive with that. Well, it turned out by making that connection. Um, that bookkeeper also had a referral for me like a week later for a construction company. So here we are just doing this whole power team and referring to one another and it came full circle. Yeah, it's the power in power team is the connections that keep spreading out. And I, and I love the angle you brought up, Mario, that this is an appealing strategy for visitors. Because as if, if Jenny decides, I do not want to do anything else but construction bookkeeping, the rest of the chapter still wants to give referrals because you look like a rock star to your clients if you've got somebody. Then that gives you ideas of who else to bring into your chapter to visit, who else you might add. And the contact spheres can be varied. Like you were saying, Jenny, you can go to two different power teams, but the contact spheres could be bigger. So there are more connections, exponentially more connections and visitors walk into that and go, oh, they are really doing business with each other. And that's good for the whole chapter when you bring that energy into the chapter. Well, and also bringing a visitor specifically to your power teams meeting yeah, that can be really beneficial because then it's not that overwhelming sense of all the different businesses and all the, the members, but they can see specifically how this is going to help their business or how they can help those other people within their contact sphere or power team. Right, right. I do think visit, <clears throat> more and more, I think 
visitors are attracted to a BNI chapter, yes, where the members seem to really respect and have affection for one another. I think you can sense that vibe in a meeting, even if it's online, I think both virtual and in-person chapters, but they're also attracted to it. If I'm going to invest my time and, and energy into this and my money into it, I need to know I'm going to generate income. I need to know that th these people know what they're doing. And I would think having somebody come to your power team, even if they don't come to your chapter or they stay after or whatever, that would be a great way to showcase that. that well, and especially with the chapters that are still online fully, having these power team meetings additionally on top of your chapter meetings is going to be really beneficial for you guys to build those relationships a little bit more right. in depth and and have those extra connections that you're not getting from being in person yeah so true chris when you started and you guys wanted all to meet together did you have some sort of an agenda that you were going to go through for the meeting or did that develop organically yeah, so um, the way that I typically think about the power teams, right, is um, I like to have them, I like to think about them as having as many as possible in your group, right? And members can be members of multiple power teams, right? And so the first couple meetings um, should be something like uh, a learning experience for everybody that wants to come, right? You fill out these forms that BNI has, you work together, you talk about, and so it's a lot of sharing and learning about each other's businesses so that you can um, start to, you know, naturally segregate yourselves into your power teams. Um, you don't have to go in with, you know, you, you, and you are my power team um, because it might not be that way. It, you know, you could find out that, um, somebody completely outside of what you thought would be in your power team is actually a really great power team member for you just because you did the homework that um again that bni has already pro provided for us um you just fill out the sheets and work together and um and so the first couple meetings were uh learning experiences right getting together finding out what we wanted to do uh and then after that um i think bni says you know you should have you can have larger meetings once in a while with the whole group and then have smaller meetings like just the three, you know, me, Mario and Jenny meet and just have our core power team meeting so that we can really start defining our potential clients and going after them. Um, so, yeah, there is an agenda. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and with the larger meetings, there's a, there actually is a provided agenda that you can follow. Um, that we found really helpful uh, in my last um, chapter that I was a member of, we used that agenda at every meeting. So, um, yeah. I love that. Um, and I wonder if you, because um, I'm not as familiar, maybe it's Steve or you has a link that you can put into the chat of how they can find that resource or we can send it out a little bit later because we do some follow-up. Um, because yeah, as, you, the, um, as you, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say there's actually there's training courses on BNI. Um, uh, sorry, you've changed the name on it. Business the, uh, Builder. Business Builder. Yeah. Business Builder, the university, right? Yeah, yeah there's uh, there are training courses and all of the material is in the training courses. Um, and so and that's actually in my last chapter, we had every member go through that training. Right. So they knew what was going on in the power teams. Um, yeah. And that's something that I hope to do uh, in this chapter as well is continue building out so we all know what we're doing because um, it just makes it simpler to talk to get you know get past that not knowing what we're doing and then really dive into let's build our businesses yeah. in the way we want yeah one of the resources we're going to put at the end is that business builder um course that has a, a how to do power teams and, and a couple of podcasts that you might want to listen to as well and if you read your success net recently Steve Tenuso mentioned it as well. Did you not, Steve Tenuso? I did, just last week's success net. Yeah. All right, if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see that there. Yeah, so read those things. Uh, and all of these are such good reminders, whether it's success net that comes to your inbox, whether it's your power teams or the one-to-ones, all of these remind me of the intentionality that the best members bring to all of their activities. Whether it's, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, we had... Um, we had a chapter happy hour 
and I talked with three or four people, so I'm going to count those as one-to-ones. And I think, sure, you can do whatever you want. We're not going to police your one-to-ones or your CEUs. But when you hear how strategic a one-to-one can be or how strategic a power team meeting can be, it's a great reminder. It's not about filling out the forms and being yellow or green in the power of one. Those metrics are to help you get to where you want to be in your business. And so then it makes it easier to say, to stop asking the question, does this count for A, B, or C? Because the only thing it really counts for is, are you making more money? Is it helping you move your business in the direction you want it to go? And so thinking about the gains exchange and, and your tops profile and all of the things that are available to you in BNI Connect or through other resources that BNI provides, bringing those to your one-to-ones and your power team and really helping each other know what you do and who you're looking for makes the time exponentially more valuable than if you just share in your feature presentation about where you went on vacation last month. These are opportunities for you to create the life you want to live. That's why you joined to be an I chapter. So, um, so I, I love that this is this is happening and this is right in my backyard. So, so great. That's excellent. And I, can I just add one thing to that? Because that's yeah. actually something we did in our power team meetings was we helped each other with our next week's presentation, our 30 second or 60 second commercial. We went over them with each other and helped each other hone them down so that we were better prepared at every meeting, right? So that we could drive what we wanted rather than like you say, just share our vacation pictures. So yeah. Intentionality so is, is an awesome word. Yeah, so good. And all of you who have numbers in your professions, it's probably a little bit more natural for you to make that leap. And, and maybe the creatives in the power teams will have to do it their way to make it comfortable for them. <clears throat> and then the wellness people, you'll have to figure out your own way to do it. This is such a great rubric. Steve, are there any things that you would like to add or any comments that, um, that we could bring up here? I have to say, you know, I keep thinking about Jenny's business. Uh, first off, that it's called Construct is great. Um, but I will tell you, I have been terrible, sorry, Chris, uh, at referring to uh, people in the financial sphere, but I'm really great at uh, referring into, you know, the construction sphere. And it's just the way that uh, the people that I interact with and how I work. So for me, it's when I think of talking to someone in the construction business, I can immediately think of Jenny. Whereas if she were just the general bookkeeper, I may not have thought about that. And so I think that sometimes when you narrow your focus, you're gonna open yourself up for lots more referrals. And I think people are afraid to do that, but I think that it's such a smart way of doing it, especially in one where there's so many people out there who do what, what you do. That's why I think real estate agents are starting to get their own specific niche as well. Yeah. So I think, yeah, um, that, that's really cool. So just want to put that out there. Yeah, that's good. I wonder if maybe what we can do is go through the next couple of slides to kind of give people some practical next steps and resources. Yeah. And then we'll see if there's some Q&A for Jenny and Chris and Mario that people, I know people are going to be curious about how to make this work in their own chapters. Yeah. So when we want to make it work in our own chapters, here are a few things that we might want to consider. Who is already missing in the contact sphere or the power team in your chapter? Who are those people who represent industries you need or someone else needs? Because giver's gain as our foundational core value dictates that we are constantly thinking of how to help our fellow members grow their own businesses. Yeah. Another thing that I think we underestimate is the importance, and now with online chapters, the ease with which we can visit other chapters and tap into other power teams. And I think BNI attracts the kind of people that if you saw an active chapter with lots of industries you're connected to and you said, hey, I'd like to come to your meeting and do you have power teams? They would probably be very happy to welcome you and share what's working for them. And then check out the resources which we will share with you here. You don't have to make this up. It already exists. People are doing it well and they're doing it with resources that exist on BNI Business Builder and other places. And it counts as CEUs, so you can stack up all the CEUs you need for months to come if you have a whole list of places that you want to look for information to help you with your business. And then start one. If you don't have one already, start talking to the people who naturally would give you referrals and to whom you would give referrals 
and then start to have a meeting and say, are you interested in doing this? Maybe if you're online, have Chris come and vicariously visit you, but not during tax season. And he can help you <laughs> figure out what the best <clears throat> way for you to proceed would be. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I love about um, inviting when you're thinking of power teams is to say, to call someone to say, hey, you know what? I'm looking for someone who does what you do because I have referrals uh, to give to you if we can, you know, uh, match up with this client that I'm, or this industry that I'm trying to target. Um, it's so much easier to get someone interested in talking about that rather than saying, can you come to my meeting? Right. Yeah. Yay, meetings. Yeah. Uh, all right. So here is a screenshot of the course that Chris was talking about, developing successful power teams. And you'll see that there are sections in this course you can enroll in it yourself. You don't have to be a director or a chapter success coach or anything in your chapter. All members can enroll to this. And if you are the first one and you're going to start a power team, you also can make, I don't know if you are able to assign it to other people or not, but you certainly could share the link or um, maybe have your chapter success coach assign it. But then within all of these, building your power team, build powerful relationships, organizing and maximizing, within those are individual presentations. You don't have to do them in any particular order. You can just do them. And remember one hour equals one CEU. You can log those at, at you know, your convenience. And if you have the app on your phone, it transfers to your laptop so that you can just keep going whenever you have a little bit of time to be working on this. These also might be great things to share if you are an education coordinator. Because I know education coordinators, when I was one, I was like, what am I going to talk about? What do they need? How can I help the chapter? And so this is something specific that you can move your whole chapter toward to help them be successful and strategic in their power teams. Also, if you are interested, there are several, but episode 411 of Dr. Meisner's podcast interviews someone who talks about using power teams to attract visitors very specifically. So you could even go to the BNI podcast website, bnipodcast.com and do a search for power teams and see those are probably 10, 12, 15 minutes long. They're short. You can do a quick one. That's also a great thing that maybe your education coordinator could assign and or talk about during the education moment to get the whole chapter on board with this concept. Any other ones that you know of Steve or ones that Mario, Chris, or Jenny, you have used? Uh, I don't have any others other than that, but- um, They're good ones. That'll keep it busy. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about it. I think as long as you're getting into the mindset of thinking about how can two people work together to generate business for each other, or more than two, in some cases, someone in the chat mentioned that they have a, a growing uh, health and wellness sphere. Um, that is working as a power team, which is very rare, but boy, that's like gold when you find it. Yeah, for sure. Um, you, something you said one time, Steve, oh, you talk about VCP a lot, the visibility, credibility, mm. and profitability, right. <clears throat> and that there's a connection with power teams and staying consistently in that level of profitability. Yeah, I think that, you know, uh, VCP getting to the profitability point um, is really important. But uh, I think Ivan, in one of his podcasts said, if you are in profitability, you can't be in profitability with more than say, six people in your chapter. Mm. Uh, because it's so hard to do because he says when you're in profitability, both people in the in the team are referring regularly to each other. And that is a rare thing. But if you can get six people doing that, you're going to make a lot of money in BNI. Yeah. Um, and so it's similar to a power team at that point. So I think power teams that work well are in profitability. They're yeah. not in credibility or certainly visibility. Right, yeah, because it takes work. We can only maintain so many really productive, strategic, intentional relationships. You right. can't do that with all 40 members of a chapter. Right. No time. Nope. No time. Even for the extroverts, you can't do it. All right, so let's see if anybody has any questions or there are things in the chat that we want to cover. I see lots of activity here, but I need to put my glasses on. Steve, are there any things in the Q&A that we so, need to address? Yeah, so uh, someone says, uh, I hold a life seat and it's been difficult to find any sphere or power partnership, any ideas? Oh, like life insurance. Um, I'll give you one that I know of. 
that's really interesting. Uh, so here's someone who sells life insurance. Would you think someone who uh, has a, uh, a, a venue that they rent out um, for you know, parties and things like that would be a great power team partner? Yes, and here's why. They're all about life events, right? When you're in insurance, in life insurance, you want people to talk about you when there's a baby born, when there's a wedding coming up, uh, all those kinds of types of celebrations, right? An engagement party. Um, and the venue is the perfect person uh, to talk about, hey, you know what? We're, we're having this big event now. Hey, have you spoken to or thought about life insurance at that point? And that's like the, the, the key time because it's tough to bring up life insurance, you know? You know, because people just think, well, somebody's dead. But really, that's not about a lot of times our life insurance people talk about getting life insurance at birth because it's such a great financial plan for them throughout their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, planning, bragging and complaining. Those are the kind of the life circumstances that help to generate referrals for each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, next, where are these power team meeting forms? I put one into the chat for finding people. But I think that, um, was it Mario or, or um, Chris who said that uh, in the course, there are those documents? Yeah, if you look under supplemental materials yeah. in any business builder course, if there are any, that's where you'll find them. And then you can download right. them directly. Right. All right, let's see what's in the chat here. Where do you find the list of all the different businesses uh, types in um, BNI Connect? Is there a list, Jenny, of like the different categories? Uh, well, the, the one slide that I showed has all the contact spheres and it's, yeah. and, and that is available. We can, we can certainly well, I get can put that, that one back in the chat. Hang on. A yeah. It's, um, yeah. it has in a perfect world, you would, your goal for a chapter would to build, would be to build a chapter that has eight people in each of the six contact spheres. You have a nice, healthy, thriving chapter of 48 people. Right. Now I know that, that, that size and that kind of health is, not as common as we would like, but that's the goal. And so as you look at the context for your form, you can see in the very top, the, the industries that are on fire, these are the ones that make the foundation of any given contact sphere. The real estate and financial services always has a realtor, a mortgage broker, financial planner. Those are the ones that are forming all of our new chapters. The health and wellness categories, you're often going to have a chiropractor, massage therapist, um, a doctor, um, acupuncturist, whatever the things are. And then you may see some supplemental ones in the next couple of tiers but they are equally important and valid in the chapter. They're just less common. And it depends on your area of the country. I know when I was supporting the Colorado region, I was, I was shocked that no one had openings in their chapters for auto brokers. Everybody, every chapter had an auto broker. In Washington, that wasn't the case. And so I know we are not far in some of our chapters. We are not far from um, Bastyr University that turns out a lot of acupuncturists, naturopaths. And so all of our chapters have chiropractors. A lot of them have massage therapists, acupuncturists in other parts of the country. That's not nearly so common. So it depends on where you are, but that list, that chart will give you ideas of who can be in each contact sphere. Then it gives you ideas of who to invite to your chapter, as well as who you might be a good connection with. That's a long answer. It's the only kind I know how to give. It's a good one. All right, um, let's see. Someone mentioned uh, the Diamond Growth Program, which is great if you really want to uh, boost the number, if you're in a smaller group and you really want to expand it out, uh, it's a really great program. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, oh, so who's this? Uh, Bradian, um, how do our speakers identify their areas of specialty? Oh, that is a good question for so Jenny. For me, that was really an easy thing when I started my business. I have worked in construction for almost 17 years. And so that is my, my entire career path has been construction. So it made the most sense to niche into construction. And the bookkeeping for construction is very specific. And so, you know, it worked well. But my processes also follow the same 
path throughout the month that is really beneficial for service-based businesses. So I also support those clients as well, but mine was years of experience. Yeah. Yeah. Authors write about what they know. Book yeah. I think you have to look at like, you know, what is an underserved, um, you know, segment of, of what you're targeting uh, and maybe go that way. Or it might be something, you know, it might be a demographic that some people are looking for. I know some people um, have, some chapters have more than one bookkeeper and they split small business versus larger business. Mm -hmm. So however you want to do it, that's going to help get you more referrals. It's worth exploring for sure. Or Jenny, how Jenny mentioned your area, you know, yeah. looking, if you're specific local, mm -hmm. then you look and see what, what types of businesses are there and what just aren't available to you. Mm -hmm. Such good yeah, stuff. we've got um, some real estate agents that are in large cities that kind of split off the city uh, in different ways. Mm -hmm. So there's multiple real estate agents, but some take like the north or the south or the different, um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, locations in, in Manhattan. They might break out the boroughs, however they want to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I and and I know <clears throat> Mario and Jenny and Chris and Steve and I have talked about some plans that I know you three have for your chapter and beyond for the contact sphere in general for financial industries and things. And so I wonder if the three of you could put your, we don't have time to go into a lot of your plans now, and I know that you're still fleshing them out, but if you could put your contact information one more time in the chat so people can get in touch with you if they have questions. Um, I know your chapter is in person. So unless you wanna get on a flight to Seattle and make the drive to Puyallup, it's gonna be a little bit challenging to connect with them, but certainly you can do an online one-to-one -one ask them questions. I know because we have had multiple uh, conversations leading up to this. So I know that they are willing to invest the time and help others succeed. They are very givers gainsy 